Hey guys, welcome back to Comagen TV where all geek culture collides. And if you're new to the channel, please click on that subscribe button as your support helps out the channel immensely. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Chaos Comics Halloween number one from November of 2000. We open with Tommy Doyle doing research for a book about the Halloween murders and Michael Myers. He gets in touch with a clerk from the county records office and manages to find Sam Loomis's personal files on Michael Myers. The date on the files, 1963 to 1964. November 5th, 1963. I met Michael for the first time today. I'd been told there was nothing left. No reason, no conscience, no understanding. In even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, good or evil, right or wrong, I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face, the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. From behind the clerk, a shape manifests in the shadows, holding a butcher knife, a masked figure that fits that very same description he had just read about. The shape grabs him by his hair and slits his throat. In the book, the shape sees a picture. The picture of Judith Myers laying lifeless in just her panties in a puddle of her own blood. The photo sends memories rushing through the shape. Memories of that fateful night. The night evil was born. Tommy burst through the door as the shape steps behind it back into the shadows. There's no sign of the clerk. But the files are all out in the open on his desk. At that moment a security officer comes running in with gun drawn. It was too late for appointments, and the front desk hadn't informed him of the visitor. The two exit the room to return to the front desk in order to sort matters out. As the door closes, we see the shape, and then we see the clerk stuck to the door with a butcher knife in his throat. The shape cocks his head to the side, admiring his work. Back at his home, Tommy looks over the files. Sam had tried to get Michael moved to a private room with a play area for therapeutic reasons. Smith's Grove was no place for a seven-year-old boy, you see. It was an inhumane jungle. His cohabitants, Blair, a boy just like Michael, withdrawn, and just like Michael had also killed his sister. Adrian, an idiot savant with an eating compulsion. Roger, the biblical expert and self-mutilator. Finally, Tony O'Malley, a violent psychopath. All of them kids, just like Michael. O'Malley would torment the other juveniles at Smith's Grove, especially Michael. So the boy did what any self-respecting sociopath who's being bullied would do. He stabbed O'Malley in the eye with a crayon. In the cafeteria, a guard brings Michael his birthday cake. But Adrian had other plans. The idiot savant devoured the cake before anyone else could even get a bite. Later, while he was taking a shower... Michael turned up the heat on him. The water burned Adrian so badly, he was left unconscious with burns over 99% of his body. He would later die in his sleep. As Tommy continues to read, he gets a call. But when he answers, there's no one on the other end. We then discover a medical vehicle from Smith's Grove, sitting on the street outside Tommy's home. During his time trying to break through to Michael, we learn why Dr. Loomis became so obsessed with him and was so driven to keep him locked up. Loomis had fallen in love with a woman, you see. Another doctor asked Miss Grove. They were engaged to be married with the wedding set two months away. She tried to talk him into leaving Smith's Grove, but Michael wouldn't have that. Loomis became Michael's surrogate father. He tried to reach him, but he also didn't put up with his antics either. Michael killed the woman, knocking her off the roof of the hospital, causing her to fall to her death. It was at this moment Loomis realized that Michael was his destiny. From that point on, he stopped being Michael's caretaker and became his gatekeeper. As Tommy takes a break from reading the journal, he notices something. The clock had just hit 12.10 in the morning. It was now Halloween, and just as he went to pour himself a shot of Jack in his coffee, the door to his office bursts open. The shape greets Tommy with a butcher knife. You! It can't be! I killed you! Tommy reaches into his desk for a gun and unloads it into the shape. Bullet after bullet passes through the killer with blood trailing behind. Click. 
Tommy has used up every last bullet, and the shape knocks the gun from his hands. Tommy's not ready to die just yet, though. He fights back, throwing the glass of Jack on the shape's face and then lighting it on fire. He knocks the shape through the window, sending him crashing to the ground. But by the time Tommy is able to look out the window, the shape is gone. You son of a bitch. Wherever you are, I'm going to find you and finally kill you. Chaos really got this one right. We learned a little bit more about Michael's time at Smith's Grove and the reason for Sam Loomis's obsession with him. I really like this issue as well as the two that follow it. This comic series does a great job at uniting the Curse of Michael Myers timeline with the H2O timeline. While it's not specifically stated in this issue, it is revealed in later issues that is the case. The portrayal of Tommy Doyle is different from Halloween 6, but that's to be expected. Tommy lived through hell again, and he's come out stronger because of it. He's no longer haunted by his past, or by the memory of Michael Myers, but instead faces it head on, and is even in the process of continuing Dr. Loomis's work. I will say I did overpay for this series, as the price gougers on eBay and Amazon like to jack up the prices, and since those are the only two places currently to find these issues, I didn't really have much of a choice. I will say though, it was somewhat worth it. Even though I won't get my money back by reselling them at market value, they're great for the collection and I can still make money back with the views received from this review. So it all works out in the end. <laughs> And I have to say, I really did enjoy this series. If you have a chance, pick it up. You know, you 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 may not get your money back from it if you want to pick it up to resell it, but it's good for the collection. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV. Have a happy and safe Halloween, and I'll see you next time when I review Chaos Comics Halloween 2 from April 2001.